Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends at Yarnspirations.com. Today we're going to do the Unicorn Snuggle Sack. This is so cute. I love it. It's a fluffy unicorn. So if you're wanting something quite fun, today is your lucky day. So let's begin looking at this pattern more carefully. In today's pattern we're going to be examining the Unicorn Snuggle Sack and working through the steps step by step and I have some resource tools that will be able to help you even have more success and I'm going to go outside the lines of the box. Woo, I know living dangerously over here on the crochet crowd and I'm going to be showing you some techniques to avoid slip stitching and all of that jazz in today's tutorial. We're going to work just uh, incrementally step by step in order for you to be able to complete this from start to finish. This video has sound alerts added. When you hear this sound, it will be your signal that the segment is finishing up. Press stop and crochet the instructions and then press play again to continue along in your project. So this unicorn is so tired she's just lying there sleeping and there's no child inside her at the moment but this is what it looks like when there's nothing inside. So the child will slip inside the sack. The mane here is only on the part, front part of this so the back half of this sack has no mane on it and then the horn is attached afterward and then you know the poor unicorn so tired she's sleeping there. We also have a heart that we're gonna be doing in today's tutorial and we also have a snout. The snout is made up of two pieces put together and then sewn to the side of the snuggle sack just like you see here. So my first question to the designers was is this a one piece unit or not? So this is just a one piece unit that goes around and around and around all the way from the bottom to the top. We start at the bottom work our way up and then what's gonna happen is that we'll put that on afterward because I was thinking that maybe the child can actually um, put their hands inside the snout but you can't because it's not it's sewn on the outside of the snuggle sack. So in today's tutorial what we're gonna do is we're gonna get you started on the bottom. You'll see that there's a nice rounded taper as we go and there's about six rubber evolutions of that and then it's just a straight up shot 60 inches if you can imagine all the way to the top and then we're gonna then come around. So I'm gonna show you some tips uh, next on what you can do because you don't see any slip stitching here at all right. So let's talk about that next. So last year we did the snuggle sack that was a shark and you will notice that in the model itself there was no slip stitching lines that you see here. So what happens here is that you can hide those slip stitching if you're careful about the way that you progress at it. Now the nice thing about it is that when you actually had this pattern and people actually did it online you will notice that there was an actual slip stitching line that happens. Now depending on the length of the body of whatever you're doing the slip stitching will automatically do like a sideways uh, progression up. So you see how it's going to the side. So eventually this followed itself all the way to the underside of the shark and kept on going. So the problem with this is that with stitches, when you see stitches, um, what happens is they don't sit on top of each other so they're always off to the side slightly. So when you do slip stitching it will always create a side line here. So what I'm gonna do for you because you will see it um, in your ex a particular example, you will see the slip stitching line. So I'm gonna show you how to avoid that line right from the start and of course if you don't watch this tutorial you won't notice to do this and I'm gonna show you a continuous revolution concept where we don't have any slip stitching at all. So the nice thing about it is that slip stitching for some people is a nightmare but if you can avoid that and have a perfect look all the way on the front and the back it's something that you'll love and as a crocheter when I see anything I always look the slip stitching always catches my attention first. So you can avoid the slip stitching and the technique that I will show you. So if you're familiar with me in the crochet crowd you notice that I like diagrams. So what I did is that I had Daniel draw me a line here and this is what the bottom of the snuggle sack looks like all in crochet format. So we're gonna start off with a chain. So we start off with the chain and then we come up and then we work third chain from the hook and half double crochet right to the end and put three in the end and then come back. So the very first chain that we start with is the, is the start of what will be the revolution and what we're going to do is that you will notice that you will be able to get progressive on the outside. So if you wanna take a look at this more carefully you can take a screenshot of this if you'd like to and just be able to save it on your computer and do so. So you'll notice that the growth rate is incremental in very strategic places just like you see it here. So this is something that I can, I love and once we get on to round number six you'll notice that there is an arrow here and in the arrow I'm that's where I'm gonna show you how to avoid the slip stitching then for this round plus all the way to 
um, 60 inches for the sack. So what we're gonna do today is that we're gonna use an L, a size eight millimeter crochet hook today. So behind the scenes on the camera, I have actually made this sample already and because I need to get started and it takes a while to get the sack done. So um, what I have is that we're gonna start off from the very bottom here and then we're gonna do our bigger revolutions to get ourselves outward and then it's just a straight shot up all the way to the very top of the snuggle sack and you will see no matter what side that you look on there is no slip stitching involved. Okay so it's a nice clean shot and it doesn't matter what side you look at. So the nice thing about this particular idea is that I'm gonna show you the continuous revolution so that you can have a perfectly seamless uh, project and then you can give this as a gift and have the 100% confidence of doing so. So what we're gonna do today is then get, get you started to the bottom and then you're gonna finish the sack and then you'll come back when you're ready for that and continue today's tutorial. Before we begin today's tutorial I want you to cut a couple extra strands of a different color of yarn that you'll be working with and I'm going to be putting this aside because I'm gonna show you strategically where to place these in order to make your journey a lot easier. So get those yarn strands ready and we'll be using those really soon. So let's begin with the slip knot using an L size eight millimeter crochet hook and Bernat uh, blanket today. So what we're going to do is that we are going to chain a total of 34. So just, just remember this first one on there, the slip knot never counts as one. So one, two, three, and four and go all the way to 34 for me and meet me back here in just a moment. So now that my chain is complete, I wanna go third chain from the hook. So just count back, so one, two and three get the back loop only of that chain and I want you to half double crochet into that one. So what I want you to do is that I want you to do a clean straight shot across the chain of just one half double crochet each with the exception to the one at the very end. But I won't uh, cloud your mind right now just half double crochet and leave the last stitch open for me and I will meet you there in just a moment. So I'm now coming to the very end of my chain. You think that there's two but there's not. There's only one left here because once you pull this tight and don't pull it tight yet make sure you uh, crochet it first. So the last chain here I want to put in three half double crochets. So watch what I'm gonna do. I'm going to just put the first one in. So right into the chain and put the first one in and just let the hook come out and I want you to grab one of those strands that I had you cut and I want you to just place it through underneath. This is going to represent the next time you come around that this is where you're gonna start the fancy work on the edge. This just avoids all that crazy counting that we have to do. So this is a really cool idea. So into the same stitch again I want you to put in two more half double crochets. So this is the very edge and look how I'm naturally just turning the project over and do it one more time please. So now we just put three double crochets into the end. So this represents the first one, second and third. So what we're going to do then, it's now upside down. So we were crocheting like this across and as we turned, we naturally turned the project over. So now this is the underside of the chain that we had started with and starting in the very first one that we want to do, uh, want to go is that we are going to then half double crochet ourselves all the way back except for the final chain. So the final chain we just have to do something slightly different and then we're gonna use the other stitch marker that I have and we're just gonna half double crochet ourselves to that point. So just half double crochet again and you're on the underside of the chain now and I'll see you in the, uh, at the end of this chain. So as we come back around to where we had started, the first chain two right here that I'm pinching doesn't count as anything. So the first stitch is right here and that's the very last one you're going to go into and you're gonna go in that one a total of two times. But wait, I just did it once and now just release the, um, release the yarn and pull the extra one through. So that was one of two times and then go back into the same one again and see I'm naturally turning the project around again and I want you to attach to the first half double crochet. This is the chain two here so you're gonna ignore that. Go right to the top of the first half double crochet and just attach it with the slip stitch. The slip stitching uh, avoidance is not gonna happen until after we get the growth of this complete. So this is round number one. So right now in the pattern we've gone and started, we did the chain and then we went all the way around for round number one. So now we're gonna progress to and chain up two which counts as nothing and in the very first one we're gonna put two half double crochets in there and we're going to half double crochet ourselves all the way across 
and right where the first one that I had you mark we're gonna put in two then the next one is two and then the next one is two and then come all the way back and then we're gonna do two and two again just so you see. So where I had you put that stitch marker in uh, when we were just in the last round there that's the start of that one and that's the start of that one. So what we're going to do then in this round is that not only are we gonna go around but I'm also gonna have you reposition your stitch markers to be ready for the next time you need to come around again in round number three. So let's begin round number two. So let's begin round number two. We're gonna chain two which counts as nothing. It's just a builder and in the very same one that you've done the join to I want you to make sure that you put in two half double crochets. This puts the whole uh, revolution into balance when you do that. So now what we're going to do is that we're gonna half double crochet ourselves across and right where I had you put that last stitch marker in right on the other side is where we're going to start putting in two into that one there. So let's just half double crochet to that point and I'll see you back there in just a moment. So now I'm coming up all the way back around I can see where the stitch marker is right here. So that's gonna be the first time I've started to put in my two. So I'm just making my way there now and I got one more to go before I get there. So right where the stitch marker is right now is that this is the first time I'm gonna put two into this one, two into the next one and two into the one after that. So I'm gonna start the first one and we're gonna put one in there so far and before you go on grab this stitch marker and pull it up underneath that stitch and that will signal next time that you're coming through here that this will be that time that you're going to um, make your additions at the end. So coming back into that same stitch then just do another, another one. So now we're at the very end just continue to rotate the project and it will be two in the very end and I'm gonna rotate the project as we go and then in the next one there's going to be two. So now all you're just gonna do now is that you're gonna half double crochet yourself across to the line and right when you get to the next one that has the stitch marker you're going to put two into that one, two into that one and then join it at the end. So let's uh, begin to do that. So just half double crochet yourself all the way to the other side and I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm coming up to the other side and I'm just half double crocheting till I get to that stitch marker and look the stitch marker is next. So now in that one I'm going to place in my first one and then I'm gonna move that stitch marker up into that first one and then I'm going to half double crochet again into that one and then the last one stitch that we have here is going to be two half double crochets. Now you're thinking to yourself it looks like you have another stitch left. You don't. It's because it, it's opened up and it looks like it's open but it's not. It's not one. It's part of the very first and you're just going to join it to the first half double crochet. So remember this chain that you have in the beginning doesn't count as anything and you're gonna go right into the top of the half double crochet. Just like there and then just join it. See and now you brought it up like that and see the other side looks like a pocket as well so you can see it works out really well. So let's move on to round number three. So in round number three we're going to chain up two and then the first two that you have there will be two half double crochets each and you're gonna power your way with half double crochets one in each all the way until you hit the first stitch marker and then the next six in a row will all be two uh, double, half double crochets and then you're gonna power your way back and right where you have the next stitch marker the next uh, four, one, two, three and four will each have two half double crochets each and then you just join it again. So let's begin round number three. So let's begin round number three. We're gonna chain up two does not count as anything and in the same one that you did the join I want you to put it in two half double crochets into that one. So one and two and in the very next stitch you're also going to put two half double crochets in there. So one and two. So now you're gonna power your way across and just one half double crochet each until you hit that next stitch marker on the other side. I'll see you there in just a moment. So we're now coming up to the first stitch marker and that is going to be the start of your next set of stitches. So I'm not gonna want you to move your stitch marker right now. I want you to continue as is. So for the next six half double crochets or uh, half double crochets I want you to put two into each. So don't move that stitch marker so the next six in a row are just two half double crochets each as we move our way around. So this is the third one of, of six and now this is gonna be the fourth and then the fifth and there's a reason why I'm not having you move the stitch marker and I'll tell you in a second and then we just have one more. So we have six in a row that each have two half double crochets. 
So now I want you to power your way now back to the beginning and right where the other stitch marker is here I want you to put two into each of the last four. So I'll see you there in just a moment. So as we come back around then you have the last stitch marker that's in place. So in that one begins the doubles. So put two double or half double crochets in each of those. So one and don't move that stitch marker just leave it and then the next three are all gonna have two half double crochets. So that was one, two and three. So now we're gonna slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet and pull it shut. So if you've been working at it like this what I want you to do is I want you to flip it up like this so that you're working across in the front of the project instead of I was been going around the back and then coming back. It's the same th direction it's just a matter of just flipping it so that the um, you can see that the outside's just like that. So let's begin round number four. So let's begin round number four. We're gonna chain up two as we had been before. Round number four I didn't have you move any stitch markers because there's nothing to move because in fact all of these here in round number four is just one half double crochet in each stitch all the way around. This is just relaxing the progression and then finally in round number five when we do that we have one more growth spurt there and then round number six all the way to 60 inches is just one half double crochet in each all the way around. So let's begin round number four. So just to reiterate if you've been crocheting like I have been where you're coming all the way around what I want you to do is just flip it like this so that you're working on the front side and then going all the way down and back around. So this is gonna be the outside of this knuckle sack that you see here. So what you're gonna do then at this point is that you're going to chain up two and then right in the same one that you did the join with you're going to put in a half double crochet and this one all the way around for round number four is just one half double crochet in each. That's all you have to do for this one. So just uh, go all the way around then for me on round number four of just one half double crochet in each stitch and I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm just doing one half double crochet in each for round number four and what we're going to do then so this is the last one going in and so what we're going to do is just slip stitch it to the top of the first half double crochet. Remember that chain two doesn't count as anything. So we just pull it on through. So what I want you to do now is that we are going to do some counting. So I know you love counting. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna get ourselves set up for the final round of number five. This is the final growths period but what I would do is count now and then move our stitch markers later. So what we're gonna do is let, let's pull out our stitch markers that are in and put, put them aside because we're gonna need them just one last time and right where we are now is considered the first stitch. So let's begin to count and then I'll show you what to do from that point. So let's begin round number five. In round number five we have a growth spurt again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain up two and then one half double crochet into each. So the first one doesn't count as the first one so we're gonna do 37 of its friends so a total of 38 and then when we get to the 39th one we'll put the two and two and two and two in a row and then we're gonna count again to 38 on this side and then we're gonna start the two, two, two and two. So let's begin to do that. So let's begin round number five. We're gonna chain up two and then we're just going to put one into the same one at the join and now 37 in a row is going to be half double crochet. So you can count that out and I will see you at the end of 37. Okay and so that was one and two and three and carry on and I'll see you at 37. So now that I have my 37 across the very next four in a row are each gonna be two half double crochets each. So let's do that. So one and then this one has two. So this is number two and then this one has two and this is the third one and the final one has two and that was four. Okay so you got four in a row that have two. So now what we're gonna do is make your way all the way now back to the very beginning and it's just easier if you count the fourth stitch back. If you wanna count all these you can but what I would do is probably just count back from here and just the last four that you do will each be two half double crochets in each and let's meet back there in just a moment. So now coming back to the start and the final four stitches will all be two half double crochets in each. So how I finish round number five is gonna dictate of having no slip stitching for the remaining of the sack. So let's just, this is the third one of four and final fourth one of four. 
there's two in each of those and then what I want you to do, normally we would slip stitch but in order to avoid any kind of slip stitching going all the way up through the sack what I want you to do is that when we go to start the next round which will be now round number six all the way to 60 inches I just want you to immediately just single or half double crochet into the very first one. So don't slip stitch just half double crochet into the very first one to begin and pull it nice and tight just like that. So what you're going to do then is then you're just gonna progress and half double crochet all the way around. So this round and all the rounds to number 60 is that there will be no slip stitching left. So every time you come around it'll just naturally grow up like kind of like a snail growing up and so you're just gonna go round and around and around and around no slip stitching at all and you're gonna go all the way to 60 inches. So by the time you come all the way back and around here you'll notice that there's no slip stitching. You just carry on a one half double crochet in each and therefore you'll end up with a nice uh, seamless look. So right as we stand right now it looks really quite uh, great. It's the right shape right at the very bottom. So now we're just going to go continuously around and around and around with no slip stitching and you're gonna go right up to 60 inches. Let's pull up that project because I wanna show you where you need to stop in order to bring this back into conclusion because now we're in a continuous revolution with no slip stitching that you have to come at a, mi a middle point at the very top of this and we're gonna meet back there in just a moment. So what I would do is put this video on hold now, do up your sack and then meet me back here and I'll show you where to finish at that point. So I've already done my sack off camera. There's no slip stitching at all because I went in a continuous revolution like I just showed you. So there's no slip stitching at all. I love it. And then what you need to do is that you need to measure 60 inches from this edge all the way to the bottom edge on the other side. It'll take you a while to get there. I'm not gonna deny that. So when you get around and you believe that it's 60 inches, what I want you to do is that I want you to get near to the halfway point. So you'll notice that this is folded kind of flat like this. So it's not folded in any kind of weird direction and I want you to kind of get yourself close to the middle of the flap here. And what we're still doing is that we were doing half double crochet to get here. So now that you're close to the middle I want you to single crochet the next two, one and two and then I want you to slip stitch the next two. Right there. And then that's it. And what we're gonna do even though you've been working in a continuous revolution is that this is could be hidden by the main anyway. So it's not like it's a deal breaker at all, right? So you're gonna use this side of your project in order to hide that. So you will notice that you were doing a continuous revolution that it just got smaller and smaller and buried itself right back into the edge just like there. So taking your darning needle at this point then you're going to want to then bury in the ends. Let me show you how to do that real quick. This stitch marker here was a result of that I was in bed doing most of this work and I wanted to make sure it was at 60 inches and I was so close. Uh, I put in a stitch marker there. So all I wanna do is just bury the yarn underneath the stitch work with the darning needle and going across and then come back in the other direction for two and then finally in the other direction for three. So that's how you bury in your ends as you go. So that's how you would get your sack done and then we're ready then to move along in this project in order to do some other things. Uh, but the sack I think is probably gonna be the most work of all of it. So let's uh, continue along in the tutorial. The sack is done but we have to make some components in order to finish. So the next part of this tutorial is that we're gonna work on this snout. It's consisting of two pieces that I've already done one in advance to make sure I understood the pattern. But now we have to make a second one and what we're going to do is do a second one that's identical to this and then we're gonna single crochet ourselves around the edge here with both of them attached at the same time. So we'll go through both thicknesses so that we have a nice rounded smoother edge as we come and then when, once we're ready then we can sew this to the side of the snuggle sack in order to have the snout of the particular unicorn. So let's begin to show you how to do this. So as we begin to do the snout we're going to start off with the longer chain like so and then we're gonna progress up and then we start then decreasing stitches as we go and the goal is to, is to have 10 stitches left at the very top. So the nice thing about this is that you don't really have to check it off on your list that you're check, 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 check. You just have to continue to get decrease and then just check once in a while when you get your 10 done at the top and then you're completely done. So let's uh, grab our pink yarn and let's begin the snout now. So let's begin to do the snout. So using the pink yarn what we're going to do is that we're going to insert a slip sti uh, knot onto the hook. Remember that never counts as one and for the snout to begin we're gonna chain 36. So one, two, three 
and four and go all the way to 36 for me. Maybe back here in just a moment. Now that my 36 is on, what I have is that row number one, we're gonna go third chain from the hook and we're gonna half double crochet into each. So one, two, and three and then turn it over and get the back loop of the third one and I want you to half double crochet in each chain all the way to the other side of the chain. So one half double crochet in each and I'll see you at the end of this chain. So I'm coming to the end of the chain and just got one more left and rows two and three are going to be identical to each other. So remember that chain two in this particular project never counts as the first stitch. So we're just turning our work and chaining up two and in the very first one, so, so looking straight down on it, you're gonna put in your half double crochet and one half double crochet in each right to the very end. And then you'll turn it again and do row number three the exact same way. So rows two and three are just one half double crochet in each. Remember that the chain two at the very beginning of the rows don't ever count as a stitch. So please do that and I'll see you at the end of row number three. So I'm now at the end of row number three. So you can see that it's kind of a box shape coming straight out just like this. So what we're going to do now is that we are going to start the progression of the taper. So the taper happens on both sides of the work and it's really quite an easy thing to do. So the very first two, two stitches are gonna come together with the half double crochet two together and the last two will come together with the half double crochet two together. So each row is gonna be the same way. So you're gonna end up with a progression of a decrease. So let's have begin to show you how to do that. So you're gonna chain up two, counts as nothing and you're gonna come into the very first stitch that is in the first one here. You're gonna wrap and going in and pull through and hold it. So you end up with three loops on the hook. So now you're gonna come to the next one. So wrap and next one, pull through, okay, and hold it. And you end up having five loops now on the hook. So yarning over and pulling through all five. And what this disc did is that it made the first two stitches just become one stitch. And now the rest are just gonna be one half double crochet in each. So what all I have to do is just watch the very ending and make sure that the final two stitches are going to be half double crochet two together. So I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm coming up to the other side and I'm just not counting, I'm just looking for the very final two stitches that are in. So I can see that there's one, he uh, one here in here so that I have three left now and I'm just gonna go into this last one just regularly and then the last two are gonna be come together. So just wrap and going in, pull through and, and hold it and then go into the last one. Pull through. So you got your five loops back on the hook and pull through all five. So now just turn your work and you can see the progression just started. So to start again, just chain up two and the first two stitches become two together. So just wrap into the first one, pull through, wrap, and into the next one, pull through. Now you got your five loops again, pull through all of those and then just half double crochet yourself now back to the other side. So I'm gonna meet you back over there because I wanna make sure that you can identify what it looks like and then you're gonna do the remaining on your own and you'll keep doing these rows until you end up with only 10 stitches left because you're eliminating a stitch on both sides as you're doing each row. So it'll progress down to only being 10 left at the very top and at this point I just skipped over a stitch <laughs> so don't do that because it'll be very obvious especially in the snout and I'll see you at the end of this row. So as you come to the other side just make sure that you can identify which is your stitches. See how this is all bunched? See how these are together? That's one stitch right there and so then the stitch right before it is the, the one left over. So this stitch and this one are the last. So just make sure you can identify that when you get there. So you got two left. It looks like there's three but remember that chain two doesn't count as anything. It's just a builder. So just put the last two together and pull through all five loops and then turn your work in beginning all over again. So then the first two become together, half double crochet, the last two to become together and what you'll end up with in the future is that you'll end up with yourself coming all the way across and this is what it will look like at this particular point. So you're just gonna get more narrow and then we're gonna put the two stitches, our two pieces together. So at the end of this one, if you have to do a second one, just fasten off and if not, what I'm gonna be doing is that I'll show you then how to adjoin everything together in order to complete the snout area. So let's uh, be, uh, continue that and I want you to continue to go back and forth, get to your 10 leftover stitches and then fasten off and then we'll move on from this particular point in the tutorial. So we're now gonna move on in the tutorial. We have two pieces just like so and this is for the snout and what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna start on the one corner 
and I'm gonna go all the way through so just make sure that you get your yarn on first. So, so using the same color just create a slip knot, put onto the hook, go into the front one and then match the same one on the back side on the other one. So you have two of them on, two projects on your hook. So just attach it, so just pull through and through, chain up one and one single crochet in the same one you did the attaching. So all you're just gonna do now is that going through both pieces, so going into the first part, you're just gonna equally space out single crochets along the edge. And what you're gonna do is that you're gonna head on all the way down. So head on all the way down, turn your corner, don't put anything extra on the corner. That'll make it nice and rounded off. Continue along and then come down to the other side here and then fasten off. So all you're just doing is equally spacing out these. So make sure you go right into an actual chain work. Never go into a, st uh, a gap because then it will force the, the stitches to um, create the gap there. So just going into the chain work on both sides of the work and just continue to single crochet equal, as evenly as you can all the way around. Well all the way until the other side. So you don't have to do the back side here that is attaching to the actual project itself. So please do that and I'll see you back here in just a moment. Okay so now this is complete and you can see that this is the inside just like so. So now I'm going to use this edge and sew it directly to the project. So to the sack. Actually kind of reminds me from this angle of a whale's tongue from this point of view. See it's nice and thick and we'll be uh, dealing with this later in order to put on some um, embellishments to make it more look like a unicorn of course. So let's move along in the tutorial. Let's move along to the main next. Okay so let's talk about the main. Isn't that quite cute? It's a unicorn toupee. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you love it. So when I first saw this I was thinking oh Lord I'm gonna have to put all these curlicues and attach each one and sew them. No it's not like that. This is a one piece unit so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a, a solid chain going across and then we're gonna drop down and curlicue our way back up and then move along in the chain and then drop down and continue. So when we start this we're gonna be starting with the small side first and then we're gonna progressively get bigger. So what's gonna happen is that here's what it looks like in a diagram format. And what we have here is that we come across as the chains and then we go second chain from the hook, single crochet, and then single crochet in the next. And then the first six of them is gonna be chain up of what we have is 13. There's gonna be four double crochets in the fourth chain from the hook and then four double crochets in each one of the chains working its way back down. You slip stitch to the beginning a uh, single crochet that you started with, you single crochet into the next and then you single crochet into the next and then go back up 13 and then work your way down just like you have. So you're gonna do the first six like that and then after that it's gonna get bigger. So after you get the six done you're then gonna chain up 26 and then the third, fourth chain from the hook will only be three and then every one of them all the way back down will be four double crochets in each to come back slip stitch, single crochet in the next and then slip, single crochet in the next and then chain 26 and you basically do this set of the instruction all the way back then to the beginning of the chain and then that would be like the toupee. So let's without further ado let's get you started on this one and then I'm only gonna show it to you one time and then you can use this set of instructions as what it says in the written instructions as well or even use this as your model because really it's that simple to do. So let's do that next. So let's begin and we're going to create a slip knot and we are going to chain a total of 49. So remember that the one on the hook never counts as one when you start. So let's go one, two, three and four and go all the way to 49 for me and meet me back here in just a moment. So my 49 is complete. Now I wanna turn it over and get second chain from the hook. So count back one and two. Go to the back hump only, the back uh, loop only and I want you to single crochet. So let's begin. We're going to then move to the next one in single crochet and then we have to chain a total of 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and 13. So now what we're going to do is that we're gonna count back four chain from the hook. So 1, 2, 3 and 4 and then that's just get the back loop only and I want you to go into that same stitch for four double crochets. So one and two, three and four. And because you're putting so many uh, double crochets in that stitch it's gonna cause this whole thing to do a twist which is the curls. So you're now gonna move to the next chain and every chain all the way back down this until you get to where we had started down here is going to be four double crochets in each. So we just have to count those. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four
three and four and then keep on moving. So just go to the next chain available to you and another four. So I'll meet you at the bottom of this chain. So once you come all the way back down you're going to slip stitch just right into the same uh, single crochet that you had started with. So just slip stitch there and you're gonna progress to the next chain on the main chain and you're gonna single crochet. So then you're gonna repeat this all over again. So you're gonna single crochet the next one and then you're going to chain a total of 13 and then four double crochets, fourth chain from the hook and four each all the way down. So you'll create all these. So you're gonna have a total of six of these shorter ones and then after you get those six done then you're gonna stop and then you're gonna continue then doing then chain 26 and then make them even longer. The only difference is that the top of the curly cues will be three uh, double crochets in the end and then four into each one of, them, one of them all the way back down. So you just have to continue to do this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen and then four chain from the hook. So one, two, three, and four and then four double crochets into there and work your way all the way back down. And the goal is then for you is that you're gonna fill up this entire chain here full of these curly cues and at the end what we're gonna do is that we're gonna attach this strip then to the top to give the look of the nice curly cues that the unicorn has. So please do that all the way down for your main and if you have any questions that you can just look at the pattern for that but that's exactly how it's done. So a few hours has gone by and I've now done the main and now you can see that there is the starting chain and all of the pieces. So when we started off we had smaller hair and then we progressed after six of those hairs that came down then the rest of them were all the longer hairs. So now is your chance to determine if your character is gonna look left or right. And the reason why it matters is that the first part is a smaller curl up here. So if you want your character to sit the other way, think about the couch that the child will be sitting on. Maybe the looking this way is not the correct version that maybe that child likes sitting on a certain side of the couch. So you have to decide that. So I'm going to match exactly what you have in the photo here but whatever side that the character is going to look to is going to be the smaller side here. So we have some options at this point and you can do this at this time as well is that we are going to attach it to the beginning or sorry to the sack. It's Itself. So what I want to do is that I'm very partial to crochet as you know obviously the crochet crowd. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to attach this here with my crochet hook instead of sewing it on. You can sew it on if you wish and what you want to do is that you want to attach your, your um, item to here. So you're gonna notice it's longer than the sack itself so then you're gonna have to get creative and kind of bunch things up where you need to. And what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna take the same yarn and I'm going to crochet with a single crochet going through the top here of this section and the sack at the same time and then single crochet into position. If you're noticing here this is where we finished off in the sack. So it's, as I told you before it doesn't matter that you're finishing off in the middle because it's gonna cover it anyway. So you have a seamless look and you have one of these. But before you can really truly do that you're gonna have to think about how it's gonna look. So this is longer than the actual width of the, of the sack. So what we have to do is kind of untangle it here and you want to look at it, get all of the, make sure all of the hair is on the one side of the chain so that you have a complete clear view and then what you wanna do is that you wanna start attaching it with some just some strings that you have and then you want to attach so that you know how to bunch it up as you go. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just show you how, what I mean by that and then I'm gonna do it and then I'll bring back here and we'll crochet this onto into position. So using spare yarn all you're just gonna do is you're gonna go onto the outside of the one over here and you're gonna go right through and you're gonna go to the side of the snuggle sack. So just go right in. So we're gonna work along the front edge of this. So what you wanna do is just, just do is just pull it through and you wanna take this string out later so don't go crazy about tying it into knots. Just uh, kinda loosely do it there. And then what I want you to do then is then come to the other side where it ends and go to the other side. So all of this here in the middle is gonna have to be bunched. So you're just gonna come in and attach. So then this is your opportunity to kinda attach things as you see it. Like that. 
and so then you wanna kinda come into the middle one and attach the middle and attach here. And so what happens is that when you go across then you can see it's all gonna bunch up. So when you were doing it you are probably thinking gee it kinda looks sparse but because you're bunching it up it gives this uh, a uh, unicorn, a crazy looking uh, toupee and it's quite awesome. So, well we have to, should call it a mane I guess. So um, that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna attach more on here and then I'll be back and I'll show you how to crochet it in position. So let's begin to attach. So I'm just gonna create a slip knot to begin. So the goal is, is to make sure that none of the, the hair here ha is left out. So don't just attach and then leave a section undone. So even if you have to just put two or three uh, st extra stitches to go into the outside or into the sack, it's good. So what we're gonna do is start off right at the edge right where you have the other piece and you're going to join it. And I don't really don't see the difference between uh, sewing it and crocheting it at this point because it's still gonna be awesome. And then just go into the same one and single crochet in position. And you might as well bury in the loose ends if you have any at this point as well. So get that all into position and then you can get rid of that all at the same time. Okay, so as we go across we're going to go into the next one of this and I'm looking to where I attached. So you'll see that there's kind of openings. So if I squeeze them together there's more stitches on the back than there are the front in this particular area. So I'm gonna have just to be creative and just be able to hide things on uh, when I need to, right? So let's uh, continue to do that. So I'm gonna go in that next one and then I'm gonna go into the one in the back and just single crochet and then go to the next one and go to the one in the back. So what happens is if I have more on one side or the other. So I can go into the same one, okay, so the same one I was just at and I can advance in the back at least one or two if I wanted to but I wanna try to make sure that I'm getting a nice good attaching generally. So I don't wanna leave any stitches untouched. So as I work across I'm looking to where I see the attaching and I'm gonna let the stragglers fall out of position at this point. I've got them buried in enough and it's only distracting you I'm sure. So we just go across and we just start just single crocheting ourselves. So I'm gonna go into the exact same stitch again on the front side but in the next one on the back and that keeps me advancing. And make sure that you get a good firm hold of the, the stitch work that as you go across. Okay, so we just keep on doing that. And then we're at our first section here where I have attached it previously with something else. Okay, so I'm going in so you can see that the first part is attached. So this hair is now permanently into position. So as I work my way across now I can take out that stitch marker. And again you can sew this if you prefer. I like using the crochet hook as much as possible. I'm kind of addicted to it. <laughs> I know, go figure, right? So you're just gonna continue to go along and match them as you go. Keeping an eye on if there's any extra. You know, stretch it out if you have to and uh, just continue to go. So if you, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the same stitch again and advance one in the back. So nothing says you can't do that. There won't be any crochet police on your door tonight. So keep on working through and attaching your mane as you go and then at the end of this you want to fasten it off and weave in your ends and then we'll be good to go with that and continuing along to make our character. So I would recommend that you put on your mane first before you're doing any eyes or anything because you don't wanna put on your eyes and realize that the hair is gonna be covering the eyes. So make sure you do all this first and then when I come back I'll have this done and we'll carry along in the tutorial with something else. So let's move on to doing the horn. So the horn's actually quite a simple idea and this is just a portion of the instructions that you see and then it says continue as established until 25 single crochets are in the round. So what we're gonna do is here, as I know it's hard to see, is that we're gonna start at the top of the horn and work our way down to getting bigger and once there's 25 stitches in the circle at the main base then you're done and then what you're going to do then is lightly stuff it and then you're gonna sew it to the underside of the sack here. So when I say the underside it's on the top layer of this piece right here and it's just right behind where the hair is sitting and that's a really quite an easy thing to do. So let's uh, begin to do the horn next.
So let's start your horn. I also recommend a stitch marker or an extra piece of yarn to mark your rounds. I've already done the first time of this and I really screwed it up because I can't see my ends. Because the reason why it's white yarn it's really hard to see your start and stop. So what you wanna do is get a stitch marker. Create a slip knot to begin. We're gonna and we're gonna chain two. So let's do that. So one and two. So let's start round number one. So second chain from the hook. So one and two count backward and go into the, it's really the first chain anyway. So you're just gonna do three single crochets. So one, two and three just like that. And what I want you to do is that I want you to slip stitch it to the first one. So one, two and three just count it back on the first one and I want you just to go into the first one and slip stitch it to the very beginning. So it's gonna be nice and tight. So what I want you to do for your own visual, I've already done it once and I screwed up and I'm a, kind of a professional. So I recommend just putting in a stitch marker to identify when you've gone all the way around so you can see it for next time. So let's start up row number two. So all the incremental growth is the same when we're going to work on this particular project. So what I want you to do is that I want you to consider the idea of growth. So in order to do round number two, we're gonna chain up one, so one sing and then do one single crochet in the same one that you did the join. The stitch marker is in that particular position as well. So you're gonna do one single crochet that's in the join and then what you're going to do is that you're gonna do two single crochets into the next one. So one and two and then you're gonna do a single crochet into the very last one that's available to you. And then you're gonna slip stitch it to the beginning and the stitch marker kind of shows you where that was before. So you just look up and just get the top one. If you're not sure you can count back four this time. So one, two, three and four. And for my own purposes I'm going to pull that through and move that stitch marker up. I almost think this is one of those ones that it might be almost difficult to teach in a tutorial because it's, it's so tight in the very beginning. So I'm just pulling it up so I can see where I am next time. So round number three. So the growth is gonna change again. So we're gonna chain up one, single crochet into the first one just like this. And what I want to do is that I want to push it so that the point right now is coming towards me. So I'm gonna turn it kind of inside out or outside right. easier to access all the stitches this way as well. So the next one it's now uh, turned out the other way and the next one is gonna be one single crochet by itself and then the next one is going to be two single crochets into the same one. So the growth is always happening at the very beginning of a round and then the very final stitch is going to be one single crochet into the final and I'm just tucking in the loose end in the, into the horn itself. So the next one is just one single crochet and then you just join it to the very beginning single crochet that you would started with. With a slip stitch just like that. So now I'm gonna continue down to round number four. So chain up one and we do one single crochet into this one and then the next two this time are one single crochet. So one and two like that and then the next one is gonna be two into the same one. So one and two and then the very final one is just one single crochet. So that was round number four. So just join it to the very beginning. I can start seeing where my slip stitching is so it's easier for me to be able to get beyond this point. So let me move on then. Round number five is chain up one and what we're going to do is that we're going to single crochet into the first one that you did the join with and for round number five it's now gonna be three in a row. So one, two and three for single crochets and guess what the next one is. That's right it's gonna be two double or single crochets. So one and two and then the last one is just one single crochet by itself and then just join it to the beginning single crochet that you started with. Just like that. So then we begin round number six. Round number six 
is going to be chaining up one, one single crochet and the same one as a join and this time the next four in a row are going to be single crochets. So one, two, three and four and then the next one is what? It's two single crochets. So one and two and then next one is one by itself and then join to the very beginning one again. So that was round number six. So round number seven, are you seeing the, the, see it's growing by one stitch each to give a nice point. So our goal is, is to get the final round to have 25 stitches all the way around. So we're a, a little bit away from that for sure right now. So round number seven is that we're going to continue along and we're going to just dive into the first one and the next five in a row are going to be single crochets. So one, two, three, four and five and then the next one is two into the same one. One and two and then one into the next one after that and then just join. So do you see if you, if you're really getting a handle of it, you'll see that there's round eight and nine. It's just the same thing. So just chaining up one, one single crochet into the next. So this time it's gonna be six in a row that are by itself. So one, two, three, four, five and six and then two into the next one and then one into the one after that and then join and then finally the last instruction there that we have is round number nine. So just going in, going to the first one and then the next seven in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and then two into the next one and then one into the one after that and then join to the very beginning again. So you're gonna continue in the same manner. So the next time it's round number 10, there's gonna be eight in a row. Then the next one will be uh, um, uh, nine in a row and then 10 in a row and 11 in a row and the goal is is that you'll eventually come and then you'll have to count at least 25 in the round. So continue the growth in the same manner. Meet me back here in just a moment. So once you have the size that you want to leave an extra long tail because you use that to sew that to the project and then what I want you to do is that if you want to do an optional stuffing so it means that you're gonna just put some stuffing and don't make it like a rock hard but just grab some polyfill stuffing from like a craft store or whatever and just lightly stuff your unicorn horn just like so. So you just wanted to give it a bit of a puff but not like rock hard crazy and just put it inside and then what we're gonna do later on is that I'm going to show you the assembly part of this but uh, keep this aside for now. Try to get the stuffing as far down as you can. You know use your tools to be able to push things down if you have to and just kind of warp it around and etc. Okay, so let's uh, keep that aside now for and then we'll, re we'll revisit this in the future and then bring it back. So let's move on to the heart next. The snuggle sack has a heart and we're gonna start at the base and then work our way up and then we're gonna do one side of the top of the heart and then the other side and then we're going to do a full circle of that and then we're gonna sew that directly down to the project. So that will be the whole assembly part as far as getting all the pieces and then we're gonna start putting this together and what I'd recommend is put on the snout first and then we're going to then put on the heart and then the horn and then just put in the facial expressions. It's easier to do that. You'll notice that the snout is slightly further down from where the snuggle sack finishes at the top. So make sure you don't attach it to the top uh, lip here. Move it slightly down and then it, you can align everything up properly that way. So let's do your heart. So as I stated we're going to start with the heart and we're gonna create a slip knot to begin and we're gonna start at the, bite, the base of the heart. So let's just chain two to begin. So one and two and second chain from the hook I want to do one single crochet. So just count it back. It's the very first one that you started. So one and two and then just that's your very first one just like that. 
Okay, so there we go and what we're going to do is that we are going to turn our work and chain up one and in the only stitch that's there we are going to put in three single crochets. So one, two and three and then we're gonna turn our work, move up the row. So we're gonna begin again. So chain up one and we're gonna do two single crochets into the first one. So one and two and then we're gonna then one single crochet to the next and then the last stitch will have two single crochets in it too. So here's the repeat pattern. It's actually really quite simple is that every time you start a row you'll have two single crochets and every time you finish a row there will be two single crochets. So turn our work and let's move up to row number four. In row number four chain up one, two single crochets into the first one. So one and two and then one into each one of the next ones that are available to you and in the very last one you're going to have two single crochets into that one. So one and two just like that. So the goal for you is to have 15 stitches all the way across. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven is where we are now. So I want you to continue in the same manner till you get to the number 15 and then join me back here and then we'll carry on in this project. So just remember how to start. So chain up one, two singles in the beginning and then one single in each across and then the final one has two single crochets in it. Please do that until you have 15 stitches all the way across. So just a few minutes ago I left you and honestly it didn't take that long and now I have my 15 single crochets across. So the next two rows what we're going to do is continuously repeat until there's 23 stitches then. So you'll notice that it's jetting out really quickly and now we're gonna calm it down as we continue to the top of the heart. So for the next few rows until there's 23 stitches along the top then you're going to um, continue along. So the next row is just chain one and one single crochet into each. So there's no growth every other round. So just one single crochet into each. So that calms it down to get that more rounded edge of a heart. And then in the next row we carry on to what we already know that we have been doing. So this row and the next row are the repeat rows until there's 23 stitches. So one right to the very end. So turn our work. So the next row is just adding that extra one at the beginning. So chain one. You'll put two single crochets in the first one and then you'll put one single crochet into each all the way across and except for the last one you'll put in two there and then that'll increase your stitches. So I need you to repeat this last row and this row multiple times until there's 23 stitches all the way across. So here we are and we got 23 stitches across and what I want you to do is that we're going to eliminate a stitch right in the middle of this thing to bring balance to it. So we're going to begin the next row and then after this row we're gonna do the hump. One hump and then we'll come back and do the second. So what we're going to do is that chain up one and we're gonna do one single crochet into the each of the next 11. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and eleven. So we've got the eleven. So you're nearly at the halfway point and then the next two are together. So just going into the next stitch, pull through and go into the next stitch, pull through and then pull through all three loops. That was the two together and then the remaining of the stitches all the way across would just be one single crochet. Please do that and then I'll meet you back here and we'll start one of the humps. Okay, so we're gonna turn our work now and we're gonna do one hump and so we're gonna do a partial way across and then finish that hump and then we'll come back and do the other one. And when we do the other one we're gonna start here. So notice where we are right now and it's gonna become obvious too and I'll show you that too as well. So we're going to begin the first one. So we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna do a single crochet um, two together. So the first two are gonna become together. So one, and two. So put those together as one and then what we're going to do then is one single crochet in each of the next seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and then the next two are together. So one and two. So you can see we're kind of at the halfway point just like where we're supposed to be. So we're gonna turn our work and just turn it 
and chain up one and we're gonna do one single crochet in each across the row. So I'm not even gonna count those and this gives it time to be able to grow properly as well. Sometimes if you rush the process especially in crochet you end up with um, things you really don't want in there. So we we'll turn our work now and let's go again. So what we're going to do is that we are going to um, go across for the third row. So chain up one, put the first two together. And you can count your stitches across but if you can just identify the last two then you don't have to. So just one single crochet across. And then the last two are together. And then we're gonna turn our work and it says do as row number two and row number two is just chain up one and one single crochet into each. Just making sure I got that last one in right. So it just got in. So just one single crochet in each. And carrying on. So turn our work and I'm just gonna flip my page here. So the fifth row is just chain up one and we're gonna single crochet the first two together. Just like that. And then the next three are singles but you don't need to count those because you can just look at the last two and put those together if you wish. But it's always good to have a verification and then we turn our work again and we're going to do another two together. So turn our work. So chain up one, put the first two together and then one into the next one and then the next two are together. And then all we're just gonna do is fasten off. So you have three stitches left at the top. So we're gonna fasten that off and we're gonna go back and we'll start the other hump. So the other hump is very similar in two instructions and the only difference is that where you're starting. So let's turn it back. Remember that we started and we did the hump starting on this side. So I want you to turn the hump or sorry turn the heart so that you're starting in the center here and then we're gonna continue to do this side then continuing up. If you start here what happens is that you'll see that there's a break in the pattern and that you'll see that there's a, a line that's gonna be misaligned. So you gotta make sure you start looking at this particular position here. So let's create a slip knot here, put it onto the hook. So we're gonna go into the very next stitch after the first one has already been in here. So you see this is joined so we're gonna come to the next one right after it and we are going to um, go in there and we're going to just um, attach it, chain one and we're gonna put the two, first two together. So just going in that one and its friend and then you can either count it, okay, and there should be seven or you can just go right to the last two and put the last two together. Either way you're good to go. So here's the last two right here, one and two. So put those two together just like that and now it says to work the second and to six rows all over what you already know. So in the second remember what we did is that we chained up one and we did one single crochet in each. And then we turned our work and went for row number three which is a decrease again. So chain up one, put the first two together and then single crochet across except for the very final two where you'll put those two together. So the very final two put together. Turn your work. The next one is like row number two again. So it's just one single crochet in each. Okay, turn your work. Okay, and we're gonna put the first two together. And then single crochet the rest except for the final two where we'll put those two together. Like that and then we're gonna turn our work and you can see we're close to the top and we're gonna put the first two together again. 
single crochet the next one and put the final two together and you're back with the remaining three stitches on board. So that's it for that um, and what we're gonna do is that we're gonna trace it with some single crochet after this and I'll show you how to do that as well. So just fasten these off and you can just leave them holding and we'll bury those as we go. So using your same yarn, you can use a different color if you wanted to as well, if you want it to be a little bit creative and you can just join it to the tip. So make sure everything's nice and tight and you're gonna go into the tip and you're going to attach. Just bury in any loose yarns that you have as you go. So just chain up one and put in three single crochets right into the tip of the heart. So because you've done single crochet, you can just follow this around with each row equaling a single crochet. So just turn it and just work your way up evenly as a single crochet and just follow it all the way around. The tip is the only piece that has the extra stitch. So you're just gonna single crochet across and then just follow it around and keep on single crocheting and come right back to the end. So I'll leave that for you and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way back to where I had started and I'm just going to join it with the very first one that I had begun. So now what I want to do is leave a, an, elect, an extra long yarn tail here and I wanna leave enough that I can sew the entire perimeter of this to the, uh, to the sack itself. So leave on extra yarn at this point. Take off any um, loose ends that you may have or just weave them in and get rid of it and then see me back here and we'll carry on in this project. So now it's time to do the assembly. So here's the snout as we have here. So as I said, here is the top edge of where the hair starts. This is the shorter hair comparison to the longer hair. So whatever side that you put the hair on that's shorter is the side that the snout will be on. So what you wanna do is you wanna kinda look at the photo and see where those hairs are coming down. So you'll notice that the hairs are coming down and then the snout kinda starts. So see how it's kinda just leaning down? So I think it's right about here. So what I wanna do is that I want to use the same color that I'm using here for the snout and I want to whip stitch around to the edge of this and then I'm going to go all the way across and then I'm gonna turn it over and whip stitch on the other side so everything is attached on both sides of the snuggle sack. So not only is this side attached but the other side is as well. So let's uh, begin to do that. Let's grab your yarn and let's get the darning needle and let's begin. So to begin just create a slip knot and then that'll be the section that you go in to fasten. So what I'm gonna do is just grab my darning needle here off camera and pull it, push it through the eye of the needle. There we go. So what I want to do is start off at the bottom right in the piece there and I wanna start off and I just wanna grab a piece of this snuggle sack and once you start it then it'll pre pretty much align to each other and pull through and what before you do that though just push it through the slip knot and what that will do is it'll lock it into position onto itself. That, so you have a tie. So then just use the straggler here. So just move down the stitch and down the side of the snuggle sack. So don't have it going across that it's gonna go like this. And just keep it equal to the side of the snuggle sack right in the fold. So you're just gonna concentrate on the stitch work that is on the one si a side of the snout. So the other one is already there and I'm gonna, when I turn it over, I'll get the other side and lock that into position. So just keep on moving down and eventually you'll run out of that straggler that you're bearing. So you're keeping that straggler down on top of it and it gets stuck underneath the sewing. And then you can push it to the underside then it'll be inside the snout as well. So what I want you to do is that I will uh, get all the way to the top here and then I'll turn it over and I'll see you back there in just a moment. So once you come all the way to the one side just flip it over. I did this with the other snuggle sacks as well and you, I wanna sew on both sides of the, of the project. It just makes it extra secure. So you can see that the first side is already attached and now I'm just gonna continue to move down this side. Just kinda keep everything nice and flat for you. And attaching this side of the snout also to the snuggle sack to the same edge. And moving all the way down and I'll see you at the end of this. So once you're back at the beginning to where you were started all over again, I want you to try a quick knot first. So it loops onto itself 
and then all I want you to do is go in and out of the project three times. So just glide it along into the stitch work. Don't go all the way through just into the actual uh, fibers. Come across once. Go back in the other direction for twice and then into the third, uh, third direction a third time like so. So now you can safely cut that down to your project because it's woven in and out back and forth underneath the stitches three times. So let's carry on in today's project. So let's put on our heart next. So here's the snout and the direction of the face is gonna look this way. So it's just like what you saw in the model. So what we want to do is that we wanna put on a heart and I notice that the heart is almost in line to the top of the snout. So what you wanna just do is just kinda line it up as close as uh, you can to it. What I'd recommend to you is that you may want to consider some stitch markers. I'm kind of paranoid for putting stuff on sideways because <laughs> honey it wouldn't be the first time I ever did it. And what I want to do is that I'm gonna kinda look down straight on this thing and I wanna just go into the top stitch work only so not all the way through the sack and I want to pull through there and through the top of the heart and lock it into position. So therefore when I'm diving in and out of the stitches I don't accidentally start turning this heart in a really weird direction. Also you can kinda see what it looks like. So you see how it's in this line here? That's where I wanna go here as well. So you always look for clues on certain stitch work like that. So we left a, a, an extra long tail on this thing. So what I can do, just kinda lay it flat. We're gonna put this darning needle back in and what we're gonna do is trace the heart and put it down to the top fibers. Don't go all the way through the project because then you'll um, prevent the sack from opening up, right? So what you wanna just do is kinda glide underneath the stitch work in the first set of fibers that you have. So just let's just go into the point, okay, and I want to grab under just a few of the strands that are underneath and pull through. And once I get it into the position the first time is that it's easy to, to be able to knock this out of the park. So I can dive in now anywhere I want to and if I'm gonna stitch a whack of stitches I wanna skip it on the back. I don't wanna skip it on the front and I'm just, I know you can't see this but I'm just going under some fibers. Okay, so I'm just, I'm not going all the way through this whole panel. Okay, so I'm gonna come out and then back up. So I wanna stick underneath the stitch work. So don't impede the outside edge at all. Just stay on, on the inside of that and then just dive into the very next stitch and then just grab some more fibers on the other side and then back out on the outside like so. So depending on the use, so you, you shouldn't be able to get your fingers in behind this heart if you were to push in. So what I want you to do is just dive in and out with your darning needle and attach your heart into position. So let's now work on the eye. So what we're going to do here is that we are going to begin with the slip knot and black yarn is almost impossible to use here on tutorial format so you'll have to just follow along the best you can. So we're going to do a total chain of 15. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15. So that's what it kinda looks like so far. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna go slip stitch second chain from the hook. So count it back. So one and two and slip stitch second chain from the hook and then it says to chain four. So let's uh, begin. So slip stitch in the next two stitches, sorry. So then we slip stitch second chain from the hook and we're gonna slip stitch again for the another two. So one and two and then it says to chain a total of four. So one, two, three and four and slip and it says slip stitch in the second chain from the hook. So one and two slip stitch second chain from the hook and then slip stitch in the in the, each of the next stitches that are left. So that you're creating a chronic, you're kind of creating an eye, eyelash, right? So now you're gonna come back down to the main chain and you're going to slip stitch each in the next um, 
uh, two stitches. So you're gonna go one and then go into the next one for two and do another and then go into the third and then chain four again. So one, two, three and four. Second chain from the hook and slip all the way back down that same chain and you're gonna sew this onto your project when you're done. So you're coming right back down and then you're going to come back down to your original chain and slip stitch again another three in a row. So one, two, three, and three and then chain four again. So one, two, three, four, second chain from the hook, slip stitch back all the way down. And then carry on again. So slip stitch in the next three. One, so that was a single crochet. So just keep on pulling it through and then two, and three and then chain three. So you got one, two, three and four. So chain four all together and then just slip stitch again coming right back down to the original chain. So you're really kind of creating a motif. And then what you just wanna do is slip stitch in the remaining chains that are available to you here on the, the eyelash. So that was it. So that's it. So there is your eye now. So with your eyelashes and etc. So what I want you to do is that I want you to fasten off. Leave it on an extra long tail so that you can use that as a sewing strand and then just pull through. And then what I want you to do is look at the particular model. So you, if you notice on the model that the eye, eyelash here area is kind of pointing up more on the one side and also if you look at the snout it's usually right in line with where the snout is doing the bend. So look at there and then sew that into position just like you have with the heart. So let's do your mouth next and we're going to create a slip knot to begin and it's really quite simple just chain 15. So let's do that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15. So going second chain from the hook all you just need to do is second chain going into the back loop only and I want you to slip stitch all the way across your chain. Leave on an extra long tail and then use and then fasten off and then use that to create the mouth and look at the photo for product placement or for motif placement and sew it into position. So please do that now. So next up is the nostril really quick easy just one round and you're just going to chain a total of five. Let's begin. So one, two, three, four and five and we're gonna do single crochet second chain from the hook. So just go back to the second chain from the hook. Single crochet and single crochet in X to the next, uh, sorry, in the next, uh, um, next two. So just keep on going. So one and two just like that. And then what I want you to do is that three single crochets in the last chain that's available to you. So one, two, and three. And this is how kind of we started, right? So now we're gonna just keep on turning that chain. So we were like this and we're gonna keep turning it and we're gonna come on the underside of it. So we're just going to carry on and carry on in the other side of the chain and you just wanna single crochet yourself back so one, two and the last stitch here you wanna put in a total of two more single crochets. So one and two and then you wanna slip stitch then to the beginning one that you had started with. So you end up with kind of like a, a rounded rectangular kind of nostril section right there. So now you're just gonna fasten your work off and then you're gonna sew that into position exactly where you see it also on the model. So do that and I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So with my little sleepy unicorn I have the eyes, the nostril, the mouth all into position here and what is left? Well it can't be a unicorn without the horn right? So we're just gonna shift all the hair back up 
and we want to position the horn. So just pull the horn from wherever you have it stored and what we're going to do is that we're going to attach it to the underside of where the hair is. So you wanna create that angle. So you may wanna lay this down and have that perfect angle and I want you to position it inside like so, so that it's caught popping out. You don't want it popping straight out. Of course you want it popping out towards the face of there. So what you wanna just do is kind of look at it, pull it back. Does it match the look? Yeah, that's about right. And what I want to do is it put the yarn into the darning needle and I want you to sew the horn into position. So remember that we lightly stuff the horn and it keeps it from actually collapsing so that's kind of why they have it stuffed but if you don't wanna stuff it that's up to you. So you could just gonna go straight through the project here and then you're gonna just gonna grab some of the fibers in behind. Give it a really good strong like lots of yarn to be able to grab onto it. It is the horn. Chances are the child will grab onto it more often than you, you prefer. And then you're just gonna whip stitch back into the horn. And I would consider because it, it is a popular feature is that and then go into the actual project itself and then come back out to the horn again. I would probably crochet or I would probably sew it back and forth maybe twice. And then once you get it all the way across on the other side what I would do is just kind of give it a good quick tie so right now and then take the remaining and just drag it through only the white section only. Drag it through how many times? That's right you wanted to do it three times to lock that into position. You might wanna tell your kids not to grab your unicorn by the horn, tell them it's root or something. Uh, remember it is a, a, a an add-on motif so it can have the potential to be ripped off if somebody's not that careful with it. But of course you know your children probably have better respect than some of us adults. <laughs> At least we hope right. So what we have now is that the horn is now complete and it's now up. My unicorn is now sleeping and I got my nose in and everything. I got my heart because it's full of love and that's how you do the unicorn snuggle sack by yarnspirations.com. Have a great day and we'll see you again real soon. Thank you so much for joining me today. Bye-bye.